Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with the San Antonio Water System saws announcing a boil water notice for 700 homes and businesses west of I-10. According to saws, the neighborhoods affected right now are Terremont and Stonewall Estates. People in those neighborhoods and nearby businesses should boil their water for drinking, cooking and ice making until further notice. The notice is due to a drop in water pressure. Saws officials say customers will be notified when the water is safe to drink again. We'll let you know on KSAT.com. Now to this evening's top story. San Antonio police are trying to figure out who stabbed a man on the city's northwest side. Yeah, right now details are pretty limited, but here's what we know so far. Officers say it happened around 2.30 this morning on Cincinnati Avenue near I-10. Police tell us they initially responded to that area for a shooting, but when they arrived, there was a man lying face down in the middle of the road with several stab wounds. That man died at the scene. Police say no weapon was found and a suspect so far has not been identified. Meanwhile, one person is dead after a late night house fire. San Antonio fire crews say it happened on the city's south side just after 10 o'clock last night. Our Lee Waldman is uh, live outside of that home this evening. And Lee, we understand that home is a total loss. Exactly. It's very obvious the signs of the fire from last night. You can see them. You can smell them right when you get onto Flanders Avenue. I want to point you over here to the windows. You can see all the windows in the front of this home are broken in. You can see inside of the home very clearly everything, all the belongings inside blackened and charred. We can tell that the flames went up through the roof. You can see a hole made in the roof there that was used to attack the fire by fire crews last night as they responded to this home fire. Now, San Antonio Fire Department telling us they estimate $80,000 worth of damage. Fire crews tell us when they got to the home on Flanders Avenue last night, it was fully engulfed in flames. And after getting the fire under control, crews were able to then make their way inside. And that is when they found a person dead in one of those back bedrooms. Right now, the family is identifying him as Edward Martinez. At last check, there were no other injuries reported. Investigators still working this evening to try to determine the cause of this house fire and tonight on the night beat will be speaking with the victim's brother as he remembers uh, the man that he lost live on the city south side Lee Waldman KSAT 12 news Lee thank you meanwhile police are looking for a driver that ran away from a crash late last night on I-37 officers say someone driving a red truck southbound on I-37 was rear-ended by a white Ford F-150 between Fair Avenue and South New Braunfels the driver of the red truck lost control drove off the main lanes and hit an electrical pole the man was taken to the hospital with broken legs as for the driver of the white F-150 police say he ran off before they arrived Cases of COVID-19 are on the rise across nearly half of the country right now, and health officials fear we could see a winter surge as temperatures drop and more people begin to gather for the holidays. Yeah, here's ABC's Elwin Lopez with the details. At least 21 states are currently seeing an uptick in cases of COVID-19, Saturday marking the fifth consecutive day that hospitalizations have risen across the U.S., there are now concerns cases could rise even further as temperatures drop and people gather for the holidays. St. Michael's College in Vermont has suspended social gatherings after a spike in cases tied to Halloween parties. You know, we've been predicting that there's going to be another uh, wave of COVID-19 over, over the winter. We have a about half the population uh, vaccinated, arguably 58% fully vaccinated. What that means is we have almost half the population not vaccinated. Four states now allowing booster shots for all adults, even though federal health officials recommend limiting doses to people 65 years and older and any adult whose health or job puts them at higher risk. The data now is very clear that more than six months out from your second shot, there is a decline in protection against infection, not necessarily against hospitalizations and deaths, but against infections. And if you want to avoid that, uh, people should get the booster. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, New York. Now to some stories trending on KSAT.com. Employee is sent to the hospital after being assaulted on a plane in Dallas. Police say yesterday afternoon, a passenger was asked to leave the plane after arguing with the flight attendant. That person reportedly then began arguing with another employee, punching them in the head. Police say the employee was taken to the hospital to be treated and the passenger was charged with aggravated assault. 
If you've been shopping at Trader Joe's lately, you may want to check your freezer for chicken burgers. The grocery chain is uh, recalling the chili lime chicken burgers and the spinach feta chicken sliders. After pieces of bone were found in the meat, they were sold between August 16th to September 29th. If you have any of these products in your freezer, the FDA asks that you throw them away or return them. A rare diagnosis is bringing a local family together while they figure out their next step. Coming up, how they're determined to live life to the fullest. Welcome back. A local family is clinging to prayer after their three-year-old daughter was diagnosed with an incurable disease. That disease, reducing body myopathy. The military couple says their goal now is to raise awareness with hopes of finding a timely cure. Our Jonathan Cotto tells us Aubrey's story. Meet the O'Sullivans, a young military couple with three children, eight-year-old Brandon, five-year-old Zach, and three-year-old Aubrey. I am Aubrey O'Sullivan. And I am three years old. I'm three-year-old. You are three. For Marcus and Allison, life was seemingly normal, hunkering down at home during the brunt of the pandemic and homeschooling their two boys. That's when Aubrey's health took a sudden and unexpected turn. Yeah. The couple says before November 2020, Aubrey was able to run, jump, and play, but soon they noticed something was wrong. And then we started noticing like um, she was a little slower when you go to pick her up. She felt a little limp, but I thought it was you know, just her playing like, oh, I want you to carry me. So when I pick her up, she just let everything hang. Concerned for her development, they took her to a neurologist, where after several MRIs and misdiagnoses, they finally got an answer. During that time, we had blood work done and uh, the genetics came back with a match for something called reducing body myopathy. A diagnosis that's offered little to no hope for Aubrey, and a hard one for Allison to accept. We were told that it's progressive, rapidly so in children, and that there's not a treatment or a cure. And um, they told us to take our daughter home and just enjoy her. And um, it's just been, it's been really hard to, to, to sit with that. Aubrey has already lost the ability to stand on her own, and soon, Doctors say it will be hard for her to breathe. Respiratory failure is um, usually what the cause of death is with this disease. And in um, infants and early ch childhood, uh, they give a prognosis of age five. Aubrey's three. For the O'Sullivans, the clock is ticking. And their time with Aubrey is now more precious than ever. All I know is I cherish every minute that I have with her. I'm just trying to make the best of the time that we do have because I don't know how much I have. Because there is no treatment or cure for Aubrey's diagnosis, the O'Sullivan's have created a foundation, Cure Reducing Body Myopathy in an effort of raising funds and awareness. For more on this story and how you can contribute to the foundation, you can head on over to ksat.com. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. We're taking a look outside with live cam right now, seeing the sun set on a beautiful day out there. Temperatures were able to climb up to near 80 degrees and will be near 80 degrees tomorrow as well. Let's take a quick check of the aquifer. The aquifer itself is up to tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, so that's some good news. And the pollen count, though, quite busy. Molds are high today, uh, and that's the main reason out there for any kind of sneezing or anything like that. Ragweed, pigweed, juniper, and grass are low. Now, uh, looking outside, for the rest of the evening. It won't cool off quite as quick, but you'll still want a light sweater. Temperatures will be near 60 degrees by midnight. So what's up with the weather? What are we going to be talking about? A noticeable increase in humidity in the form of fog tomorrow morning and a warm up early this week. But where is the rain? I've got a look ahead coming up. Our stretch of nice weather continues, and so does our stretch of dry weather. Yeah, I'm loving this right now, and we're loving having you here, Sarah. Fill Thanks, in for guys. Katie. I feel like I haven't worked this shift with you guys in a while, so it's good to see y'all. And you know what? The trees have been changing. Have you noticed yes, the red oak? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit later uh, than what we saw last year, but this is from our very own meteorologist, Justin Horn. Take a look at this red oak starting to turn color here. Beautiful out there. Of course, Lost Maples 
is in its peak right now. Uh, now all the weekend passes were sold out, but of course you can go on their website and see if there's any weekday passes for you to check out the trees there. Now today was a beautiful day. As Tim and Courtney just mentioned, we were able to see dry conditions, pleasant conditions, low humidity, a little bit warmer than seasonably average in the afternoon, 79 for the high temperature. And this morning it was chilly. It was 47. We will not be as cool as that tomorrow morning. And a big reason for that is we have seen the humidity uh, start to increase. You may not have noticed it. Dew points are still in the 50s, which is pleasant. But when we compare this to dew points yesterday at this time, uh, they were uh, 20 to 25 degrees cooler. So again, a big increase in the humidity from the Gulf of Mexico, just not quite noticeable yet. You will, however, notice the humidity in the air tomorrow morning in the form of some fog. So let me take you through the future cast. You can see how fog is going to build. Visibility could be as low as a mile in many places tomorrow, especially uh, south and east of San Antonio. We'll be looking at morning low tomorrow in the mid to upper 50s, so quite a bit warmer than how we started off the day today. But still one of those days where you may want to dress in layers because we'll see the fog dissipate and by the afternoon it'll be sunny and warm. High temperatures will be in the mid 80s out west toward Del Rio, Carrizo Springs and down toward Laredo, but right around near 80 degrees around the metro area, 81 for the high in New Braunfels, 79 in Kerrville, 81 in Gonzales and Hallettsville for the high temperature. And here's tomorrow's forecast for your Monday around San Antonio. Sun is going to rise around 7 a.m. and around that time we will have patchy fog, 57 degrees, clearing skies throughout the morning hours, 74 already by noon tomorrow, and then an afternoon high right near 80 degrees. It'll be sunny and warm and a touch muggy out there. You won't necessarily notice any kind of oppressive humidity, but it won't be as crisp as it has been the last few days. Winds from the south at 5 to 15 miles per hour, and once the sun sets close to 540, it'll be a mild evening, still near 70 degrees by 10 p.m. All right, on the radar and satellite, a lot of the Great Lakes region experiencing their first snow of the season from some lake effect snow. Now behind that, we have a cold front that stalled out across North Texas and east of us in San Antonio, high pressure system that's keeping that front from moving south toward South Central Texas. That high pressure system going to be sending Gulf of Mexico moisture our way over the next couple of days. And that's why with dew points right near 60 degrees tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to have morning fog and morning clouds. But then before it can get too muggy, another nice Pacific cold front going to be moving through. Not necessarily a strong cold front, but definitely noticeable, especially by Thursday afternoon. It'll be breezy and comfortable and dry outside. Well, where's the rain? The only chance for rain this week is a 20% chance when that front moves through Wednesday night into Thursday. Not a great chance for rain. We're starting to see drought creep back in, so it's getting to that point where, yes, the weather's nice, but we could use a little bit of rain. It's just not in the cards for us over the next seven days. High temperatures, though, on Thursday behind that front, going to struggle to get out of the 60s, and it'll be mild by this time next weekend. Tim, Courtney. Love the whole forecast. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, after a disappointing outing against Denver last weekend, the Cowboys bounced back in a big way. Yeah, you wanted to see this kind of response. Coach Mike McCarthy said it was exactly the response he wanted to see out of his group. When we come back, the Cowboys offense was firing on all cylinders, and they got some help from special teams. Larry Ramirez is in Dallas. We'll hear from him on the big win. Plus, Spurs fall on the road in L.A. after another heartbreaker. Got the highlights next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. A big day for the Cowboys looking to right the ship ahead after a head-scratching loss to the Broncos last week, and they take control on the opening drive. Dak Prescott finds C.D. Lamb in the end zone for the 13-yard touchdown. He's already dancing. It's 7-0 Dallas over Atlanta. They led 7-3 after one. Second quarter, up 14-3. Offense stays hot. Ezekiel Elliott maneuvers his way across the goal line for his second touchdown of the game. The Cowboys go up 21-3. Dallas ball again, under two minutes left in the half. Prescott connects with Lamb again, this time for a toe-tapping grab along the boundary. What a catch there. Dallas takes a 28-3 lead. And they're not done. After forcing a three and out, Dorrance Armstrong comes through the line and blocks the Falcons punt. It caroms into the end zone where Nishan Wright falls on it for a touchdown. The exclamation point to a near perfect first half. The Cowboys roll to a convincing victory, 43-3 over the Falcons. KSAT 12's Larry Ramirez made the trip up to Jerry World, and he has more.
What a difference a week makes, right? Last Sunday, the Dallas Cowboys were blown out right here at AT&T Stadium by the Denver Broncos, and that didn't settle well with the team at all. So they responded by thrashing the Atlanta Falcons today right here at home, 43-3. Uh, I think clearly it was the response we were looking for. Um, you know, I think... From Monday, the players were very accountable, uh, went about it just the way you, you would expect them to. Um, everybody contributed today. Uh, excellent team win. Um, you know, we had a ton of production, and, you know, we were, you know, pretty much dominant there in the first half. Yeah, it was a great complimentary win. Uh, obviously, we wanted to rebound. We wanted to, as you said, respond, uh, put last week behind us and learn from it, take uh, everything that we can from that and just uh, grow each and every day in practice this week to make sure that we came out and we had a better, uh, better performance. And we did that tonight. All the things that went wrong for the Cowboys last week, well, they went right for them today. We'll have much more on the Cowboys impressive victory tonight on Instant Replay. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Larry. The Cowboys will next travel to Kansas City Sunday at 325 p.m. Spurs on the road this afternoon in L.A. to take on the Lakers. LeBron James still out with an abdominal strain. Let's fast forward to the fourth quarter. San Antonio trying to rally. Keldon Johnson knocks down a triple from the wing. Two of his team high 24 points. It's 90 to 82, but Anthony Davis is too big inside. Later in the frame, he corrals the rebound, backs his way into the paint. That shot is no good, but he collects his own miss and finishes with the two-handed jam. 34 points for A.D. It's back to a 10-point lead. Spurs not done yet. Thaddeus Young gets the floater to fall. That makes it a five point game and then DeJounte Murray finds McDermott in rhythm for a three ball and the Spurs are down 105 103 with two and a half minutes remaining but LA closes it out Carmelo Anthony drills the triple he had 15 points Spurs fall to four and nine on the season 114 106 will have reaction tonight on instant replay well, it certainly wasn't pretty yesterday, but undefeated UTSA got the job done once again in front of 30,000 fans at the Alamo Dome, defeating 1-8 Southern Miss 27-17. UTSA didn't earn any style points, necessarily speaking, and they remain the number 15 team in the nation in the latest AP Top 25, but dropped two spots to number 18 in the AFCA coaches poll. Regardless, UTSA is 10-0 because their defense gave the offense a lift, forcing three fourth-quarter turnovers that resulted in 10 points and provided the final margin of victory. I mean, you just really got to buy into that triangle, and I think we did a great job of that tonight. Um, just really believing it, um, being physical on defense. It was one of those nights where the offense was a little bit slow, um, and we just had to really, hurry, you know, pick up the tempo and really just keep on, you know, giving giving them the ball as much as we can. So I think we did a great job of that, and then you know um, they picked it up in the second half. They did a great job. Next up, the Roadrunners host UAB for the Conference USA West Division title next Saturday at 2.30 p.m. The Trinity Tigers finished their regular season at 9-0 with a dominant 55-21 victory over Rhodes at home yesterday. And now they know where they're heading to the Division III tournament. They will face 10-0 Mary Harden Baylor in the opening round in Belton next Saturday at 2 p.m. For the first time in franchise history, San Antonio FC is heading to the USL's Western Conference Final. The Alamo City Club defeated Rio Grande Valley FC 3-1 last night at Toyota Field in the West Semis to advance. Santiago Patino scored two goals in the victory, and he thinks the team is playing their best at the right time of year. We're just a team that we know how to compete and we know how to win, and we know what it takes to win. So right now it's playoffs, and every team that gets on their way is going to get it. SAFC travels to Orange County for the Western Conference Final next Saturday at 9 p.m. San Antonio time. There was another first yesterday afternoon at the Alamo Convocation Center. Brandeis Volleyball swept Austin Vandegrift in the Class 6A Regional Final to clinch the program's first berth at the UIL State Tournament. Jalen Gibson led the way with a team-high 17 kills. Carly Ferris dished out 31 assists, and Emma Halstead delivered the final point to send Brandeis to Garland. Our energy kept us going even when we were down a couple points, even when we started to lose a couple. And I also think our trust in each other. We know that everyone's going to go out, they're going to play our hardest, and that we're going to go out and do all that we can to get the next couple points. And I think that really led us to go far. The Broncos will face Bridgeland at the Curtis Colwell Center this Friday night at 5 p.m. Canyon is also making the trip this year. They play at 1 p.m. In case that 12 sports will be there this Friday, guys. Best of luck to them. Thank you, Andrew. You got it. We'll be right back. Morning fog and afternoon sun tomorrow. It'll be warm with a high temperature near 80 degrees. In fact, it'll be warm for the next couple of days too. Highs in the low 80s and breezy conditions. Cold front rescues the day. Wednesday night to Thursday drops our highs back down into the fall uh, range, feeling like it's in the 60s for most of the day on Thursday.
Thank you, Sarah. This is what it pays to live in San Antonio. That's all <laughs> of our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the night. Have a good evening. See you then.